GM Rank 1 Support Sensei Awkward is one of the most prolific coaches in the Overwatch community today, and his teachings are inspiring thousands of Overwatch players to take ownership of their games and their gameplay. But in my journey to find my true ceiling, I have come across many other capable and qualified teachers that can help fill in the gaps between Awkward's principles and my practice. Today, we're going to be studying under T Boogie, the number one rated Overwatch coach on Fiverr with a perfect five star rating, as well as thousands of hours of coaching experience. He's a top 500 tank, a top 50 support and DPS player. Come join us as we learn Anna tips from one of the masters of the game. You think we need one more? You think we need one more? All right, we'll get one more. What we might do is have you give a brief introduction of yourself and who you are and what your qualifications are and stuff mm -hmm. like that and then let people get to know you a little bit all right sure sure so a little bit about me uh, my name's boogie i started playing this game in season three so a long while ago now i think that was like 2017 um so i used to try to uh, play this game very very competitively i was trying to go to overwatch league um, was my goal when I was a little bit younger. Um, so I played this game a lot. I got up to like top 50 range a couple times. Um, you know, I, I, I've mained like support and DPS primarily with like, you know, pretty much thousands of hours in um, each of the, you know, in the roles, a little, little bit less than tank, but still, still a good sum. Um, so I still now I just you know play a little bit more casually, but I you know was like GM two like you know last season or something like that. Um, so yeah, that's that's a little bit about me. Awesome, yeah. Thanks for sharing. I really appreciate that. <laughs> um, yeah, I gave uh, a replay code for Circuit Royale. I think that's the one in the last episode that's I think got the most. I was the most frustrated with. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I think there was a lot of feedback on Reddit and then some of the comments on YouTube um, about that game in particular. And so mm -hmm. I was wondering if we can kind of start that one. My name is Lyman Zerga. My name is Lyman Zerga. All right. So first thing I'm noticing is of course there are our, our Reinhardt's not in the most optimal of positioning as they as they usually are not going to be at the down at the metal ranks here. Right. Um, he's a little far forward, right? Kind of pushed up ahead of your whole team. Um, like I said, not where he should be, but the fact remains that he is there. Yeah. So therefore, I would probably recommend making sure that you maintain your line of sight on him mm -hmm. because what's going to happen is if you know, you're out of line of sight of him here where, yes, this is, you know, a pretty solid position generally. If you can't see your Reinhardt, he's just going to run in and die. And then if he runs in and dies, well, then you pretty much like you're down a person and you're you, you're pretty decent. Good chance that you're going to lose the fight anyways. So it's better to give up the good positioning here to push forwards into line of sight now that could be two, diff two different ways here um going this way um would be okay you know if you, if you want to come and just peek from this angle you can also peek um, from inside here pretty much i'd say either or works um if hanzo's pressuring you then maybe inside might be a little bit better um but that's the the idea so um there was a prominent coach back in the old uh overwatch one days uh his name was jane he did a lot of streaming and and uh, you know youtube and stuff like that um he yeah. said if uh, one person is uh you know sprinting in and dying on their own is being stupid if one person is being stupid that's called feeding if five people, he said six people at the time, if five people are doing something stupid, that's called a strategy. <laughs> so the main idea behind that is if Reinhardt's running in all the way by himself and going in and dying, well, then that's called feeding and that's no good, but you shouldn't let him feed. So if your whole team is with him in their spawn, then that becomes a much more, uh, it, it, you're going to have a better chance of actually winning that fight and having it be a strategy because that's actually a strategy on some maps. Yeah. Um, I, I, no, it was good. Because it's interesting you bring that up. I think um, in one of my last sessions, we had this discussion of mm -hmm. do we play to save teammates versus play to do the right thing and those choices mm. that you make yep. as you're trying to figure that yeah, out. Yeah, um, exactly. So, yeah, definitely could have... Mm -hmm. Yeah, and 
save it. 100%. And you should do your best <laughs> to do the right thing, but um, it, it, you, I'd say playing to save teammates it generally takes a little bit of a priority um, because like, you know, this is going to be much, much better once you start to rank up a little bit more. Um, but if you're not, you know, saving teammates when they're being stupid, then you're not going to rank up. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> All right, cool. So he backs up into line of sight. Now this is a good spot. So maybe alternatively, like if we're further down to the, cause we don't, you don't know if he's pushing, if he's backing, if he, unless he's communicating it. So it's better safe than sorry with it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's look at our line of sight on him currently. Right. So then, then the question would be, okay, we nanoed monkey and we see monkeys going in. We see Reaper, we kill Reaper. Here, line of sight on monkey. All we gotta do is, oop, oop, can see monkey. Yeah. Um, or maybe even slightly longer would be like, uh, go and jump on card or go push forwards to here. Um, but no, then instead of pushing forwards, we back up. Right, because we, I guess we see, you see Junkrat to the side there, but Junkrat probably wouldn't have um, stopped you from staying on this angle, which this angle does still give you line of sight on Monkey. Yeah. Um, which Moira's there now, but she's going to be easily pressured out if you have three teammates there. Yeah. So we just back up really, really far, which just puts you on a line of sight. So that's part of Ana positioning is going to be keeping line of sight on the on the Monkey, right? Is or on your teammates in general. Good, you know, good good Ana positioning is being able to see your teammates, being able to, you know, have, not have the enemy team see you if at all possible, unless you're landing abilities. And then thirdly, being in position to land your abilities. Yeah. Really, Zana, you're trying to check off as many boss boxes as possible with your position. Gotcha. So he pinged up there and then, yeah, that's where the Reaper got out and got away. Mm -hmm. But I mm -hmm. think it took me out of like the fight for a while. Yeah, the, the Reaper. Um, now, Monkey here does push very, very far in. Um, so he, let's let's rewatch from here. Right? So we're kind of regrouping, waiting for our team. We see Monkey's here. Um, on these in-between fights, this is usually going to be a really handy time to be rotating, um, potentially here. I mean, you do see Monkey's a little bit close. Yeah, I guess you were trying to look, you, you were kind of looking up there. Um, either because you see monkeys pushing either one of two things right because we need line of sight right because yeah. otherwise monkey dies and we lose the fight right um either you can be push taking this time to push up the high ground so you can see and then you can dual reaper with your junkrat and then still kind of have line of sight or you need to be pushing up to here to the corner where you can maintain line of sight on monkey right so it's kind of the either or but we can't just kind of sit around you know yeah when I got pushed back in the very, very beginning when I was running away from that Orisa, should I have just directly ran up the stairs to get to that position? Because now um, I'm rotating right at this point. Oh, like all the way back here, you're saying? Like when you're running yeah, away from I'm Marissa? running away, and then I'm like, I know that we still have time. I'm waiting on my team anyways. Because yeah. at the point we're yeah. looking at, mm -hmm. it's probably too late for me to just rotate. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't, I wouldn't rotate now across because you would just get shot at by through the window, so you die if you tried to do that. Plus, Reaper's there, but you could right now, this instant, go and rotate right up to that high ground, and then that would be you have plenty of time. Because notice between now and when Monkey goes in, right? So now it's five, ten, fifteen, and then Monkey's dead in twenty seconds. So you get twenty seconds to rotate. Yeah. Yeah. sitting here Ugh. but took me out of the fight again. Like, yeah but also just n notice just line of sight capabilities um, from here is they push forwards monkey pushes forwards and you can't see so once again um, positioning wise maybe if we're up on this high ground mm -hmm. which we can help we can help contest reaper off we already have bastion here with us we can sleep and nade and help pressure reaper and then if he, reaper is contesting us too much then we can drop right of course but if we're up here notice how easy from you know we can see teammates from here 
and then it's a much easier transition to move over to here if you need to um, or even trying to and then also this provides an off angle so it's just the different i'd say it's a it's a pretty good option instead of being on that low ground just to be up on the high ground because this is the exact same angle you know this is mostly the same angle if your teammates are back here this is a much better angle and then this is gonna take you a couple seconds as opposed to an entire fight's worth of time to, to rotate you know yeah Yep. So positioning not just where where your teammates are, but where they will be, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good statement to remember. Positioning where your teammates will be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. We have to be very careful, very precise. Yeah. We gotta be nuts too. The other thing I'll note here is that Reinhardt's pretty far as of the time that we're nanoing. So. Um, now let's first let's evaluate is Reinhardt the target to nano probably I would say Reinhardt's as of the current moment best target on your team to nano so good good choice there but the timing is a little bit off because he's so far away from people that by the time he gets to them he's already wasted if he runs immediately here by the time he gets there he's already wasted half the ult right yeah. um, so therefore either like it should be communicated or even better i mean like you know i obviously communication is the best um ideal here but if there's not communication then you just let them get it like the teams get a little bit closer reinhardt's eventually going to want to swing on them anyways so just when reinhardt does get closer that's when you nano him. that, that kind of makes sense just like even probably waiting like a second or two he probably mm, would exactly done anyways this guy was yep. very aggressive <laughs> mm -hmm, yep all right, so Junkrat starts flanking around. Let's take a look at this. We land the sleep into the wall in an accident. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we turn around and we nano the Ash. Um, now, I'm not sure. Are we trying to aim for the Ash or the Junkrat here? Do you know? I think... Um, well, in hindsight, I could probably say the Ash because she's critical. Mm -hmm. uh, my thought was a Junk just flanked us. Um it's within the effective range of junk. I'm probably too close mm -hmm. to, for this. So I wanted to use it before, you know, he had the chance to kill me. They were pushing up the hill anyway, so it felt like a good time. Um, so honestly, mm -hmm. in my head, I don't really remember, but I was probably thinking if it's a DPS player, I'm going to nano them and mm -hmm. hope to get some value out of that in, in the event that I died. Sure. So let's go over a little bit of nano priority then, um, because I would um, just like to correct that notion of DPS player equals nano. Um, since most DPS characters, um, not, not all, but most DPS characters outside of their ultimate are actually pretty poor nano targets. Um, because for example, let's say you nano Ash here. Um, Ash nano by default really isn't um, amplifying too much. It amplifies her damage, but I don't think that she's even going to be able to, with, like with breakpoints, I don't think that she's able to even one-tap any body shot anything. Mm. Um, and on top of that, she's going to be missing a lot of shots still because she's a skill shot character. She's also yeah. not getting as much value out of the healing and the damage reduction because she's a squishy target. So that's why by default, tanks are usually fantastic nano targets. Um, but usually the best nano targets are combos right when you can yeah. combo with a nano blade or combo with a nano visor or combo with a i don't know like a nano death Blo a death blossom or a electric cowboy with a high noon things like that right. um those are going to be your highest value nanos um and so typically i would say just like you know just going for a flat up dps isn't the place so reinhardt here would probably be the best or even um second best would probably be bob as well as long because they don't actually have anything to shut down bob so nanoing bob would be also a really good option as well yeah that's yep. a good thought i've never mm -hmm. once nanoed bob <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. oh man because i don't think it's it's terrible all right so let's see we land the nano um, Nano maybe used a little bit early because their whole team isn't even really there yet. Um, they're kind of all walking back still. Um, 
well, yeah, they, they still have like two people walking back. So um, yeah. at this point, the fight hasn't really started yet, which means that if they're all overextended by themselves, we might have been even been able to kill them without an ultimate. Um, ultimates usually are best used when like during fights and at the start of fights. This is like probably in the in-between fights phase, which rarely do you want to use ults in between fights because maybe it wasn't necessary because there's already a 5v3. And then if we use Nano here, maybe we put, get a kill and push him back, but then now they're coming in with ults and they're going to have the advantage. So now we yeah. don't have Nano and they can just kind of push through us. Yeah. Okay, very nice. Okay, now this is, I, I think that this Nano of the, uh, of the Junkrat's fine because it, you're kind of wrapping up the fight. Um, you know, you're at a pretty big advantage here. You just want him to contest cart. Uh, I think that's all right. You know, Junker Queen's also coming behind you. Either would be fine. Um, also could be maybe looking to combo with an ultimate. So instead of uh, maybe nanoing Junker Queen when she gets her ult might be a little bit more efficient. Now, I think that was probably an okay time to nano her anyways. And just maybe not super optimal. Let's see. Nano her. Right about now. You know, it's, it's, it's a decent time. Another good combo could be like Nano Coalescence as well. So, so a good option. Yeah. That's something I, I know for a fact I'm not even like thinking about or looking at. Um, is, is, you know, it's par targets. Like pressing tab to check my mm, the status yeah. of my teammates. Like, yes. I don't do that um, enough. I would recommend doing that at a very minimum once between every single fight because that gives you a lot of info on did they swap characters did we swap characters what ults do we have to work with um another handy thing for knowing for making ults easier on yourself is going to be coming up with a priority list in your head so at the very beginning of the round think to yourself um th think to yourself who's the top three people to be nanoing right in order and you can put conditions on it. So only this person, only Genji, if he has played, right? Um, then on top of that, you can put people maybe close, you can put them in the same tier if you need to, but it'd be like, okay, if I'm working with, I don't know, let's say Doomfist, Soldier, Tracer, and Brig, we're gonna say, okay, Nanovisor, number one, Doomfist, flat up Doomfist, number two, um, maybe Nano Rally might even come in above Tracer just because Tracer is going to struggle with um, the yeah. um, skill shots to work with. So that just come up with those priorities beforehand and that will make making those snap judgments in the moment easier. Yeah. A little less conversation, a little more action, please. All this aggravation ain't satisfaction. Ain't one other thing I'm just going to take note of for the moment, and we'll go start to go into it more as we go, um, is just that I'm noticing that abilities are being thrown pretty frequently, which is good um, when it comes to um, abilities in general, but then especially like Ana abilities, um, you're going to want um, the quantity with your ability usage, but you also want to make sure you're getting quality with your ability usage. And I'm just noticing that a lot of our abilities seem to be missing. So we're going to go into how to actually land them more frequently in a minute, but I'm just making note that that seems to be an issue so far. So like regarding, <laughs> not a, let me know if I'm interrupting your train of thought, good. but like ab no good. ability usage. Mm -hmm. um, this series is modeled after Awkward, who is, yeah, you know, you probably seen his YouTube videos around, but one of the things mm -hmm. he does say is just use your cooldowns because people on the low ranks they forget, don't use them. They forget they mm -hmm. even have them. Yes, um, correct. And knowing that me personally, I'm not actually in bronze, even though in this game I'm playing mm -hmm. in bronze. You know, he talks about learning discretion for the ability usage as you rank up and when is appropriate mm, to use yep. them versus me trying to you know follow the letter of the law by using them whenever i have them yes use, uh, or using them off cooldown mm -hmm. yeah <clears throat> is that yep, something so, yeah i mean I, don't let me interrupt your train of thought or yeah I no all good so we'll like i said we're gonna get into a little i'm just trying to accumulate a few extra things um i think that uh, we're, we're gonna get into how to use them with higher quality because like i said you're looking for quantity and quality because if for example if you never 
throw them in ever, then you're not getting any value. But if you throw them in all the time and you miss everything, then you're also getting no value, right? Yeah. So um, now it just it's better to throw them and miss and l learn from that than it is to not throw anything. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you want to be able, we, we want to be landing them. So we're going to talk about actually landing them. Um, and like you said, you will start to l learn the situations of when to hold on to them as you rank up. For example, one time to where you might want to start holding on to abilities is when you have like flankers or dive characters pressuring you. That's going to be when you can start to hold on to your abilities, especially sleep much more frequently so that you can get them off of you when they, when you can get contested. Whereas if you don't have anything to contest you, you're just tossing them in whenever you get the chance. Yeah. Okay, good nade, but prioritize keeping yourself alive over landing the anti, unless it's like a five-man anti. Yeah. Usually, staying alive is more important. So if you're low HP and you know and junkrat, you're just trying to anti junkrat. Doing the self heal nade is gonna come up higher important. Yeah, that's a good point. That's definitely another case, like we've talked, I mentioned earlier, like following the letter of the law. There, I I think that um you know one of the tips is to use nades aggressively and in that mm, case mm -hmm. i'm always thinking oh i gotta get offensive yep. value out of my nade even when i would die for it so that makes sense mm. so one other like mm, minor thing i'm noticing so we're very frequently i mean like tanks tanks are definitely okay targets to go for sleeps on mm -hmm. because that but at the same time they also do they're also going to be slept for slow uh lo slower uh, what was the word i'm looking for shorter duration um also make sure you're watching health bars because health bars will dictate here um nade's definitely gonna be much better versus low hp mm -hmm. right because nade will lock her at that low hp and right. make her much much easier target to finish off so if she's full hp here then maybe sleep is a little bit better but nade's definitely better as of the moment yeah i think that's g good feedback though because I didn't wasn't even thinking about like the efficiency of my cooldown usage for mm. this this game. I thought it was yep. something else, like you know, like. Um, but yeah, definitely wasted a lot of my value there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's um, start like with, with the ability usage, and so far that seems to be one of the points because ability usage as Ana is going to be one of the ways that you get carry potential. Um, it's how you do actively do things instead of just existing in your games. Where um, if you're just kind of existing and heal botting, then you don't actually end up doing very much. You just kind of yeah are there. Um, so if you're trying to win your games and climb in rank, that kind of re uh, necessitates that you do more than just exist, right? You gotta do carrying, you gotta do a really, really good job. So ability usage is, is gonna be a big part of how you can do that on Ana. So let's start with um, abilities. Uh, firstly, when you're using abilities, uh, you want to, like we said before, look for quality, um, different ways to do that. Firstly, let's just start with the concept of making sure you're putting effort into your abilities. You don't want to make sure that abilities are just like a quick, um, you know, I'm go shoot, 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 and then what's up? I'm going for sleep, and wow, well, bam, we're going for nade. You want to make sure you're putting time and thought and effort into how you're using your abilities. So we can even now on four seconds left on our nade, I can be thinking about or sleep. I can be thinking about okay, I'm shooting, shooting on autopilot. I'm thinking about where to line it up. Okay, I I see the the who I'm going for. I'm rotating. I'm tossing the nade and landing it. Um, so you're putting effort into how you're landing those abilities. Next, let's talk about another tech here. So this is going to be handy for mid to long range abilities. Um, so mid to long range nades, more specifically. Um, you, this tech only works if you're scoped in. It doesn't work if you're unscoped. So scope, you're going to look at a target. You're going to line up your ult charge and press your nade button and that nades actually can hit them from any height or any range that you're at my okay, ult so. charge ult charge there at the bottom you see it oh the like the meter yep mm -hmm. so here you can see that once again now we're on a little bit more even uh even footing and they're on a slope so i'm gonna line up the q with where they're at they hit some again wow. mm -hmm. yep so <laughs> mid the long range nades that's gonna be really great close range probably don't need it that's, that's um, awesome. 
<laughs> now, that's still a lot of stuff. So if we're, we're, our team's here and their team's there, they have shields and tanks and tanking abilities all in your face and getting an ability through is going to be very, very difficult. Um, not going to be a very easy, a good job for you or easy job. So um, thing to make this very, very easy on yourself is your positioning. So if I just do this real quick, now I just got past the shields and our teammates and the tanks and the tanking abilities straight to the back line. Very, very quick, very fast, very easy, right? Um, so yeah, like off angling, basically. yes, exactly. That's yep. Exactly. That's the term for it. Mm -hmm. So off angling going to be fantastic option. Um, same idea here. Enemy team, our team main angle. Um, what you can do is, is back up, um, as you're shooting, you can come up to the top here, right? Toss in a nade and you just got it over the shields, over the tank, straight to the back line. Sleep. You want to make sure you're, um, leading your shots that you are putting it ahead of where they're moving same thing with nades since it also both of them are projectiles um and because both of them are project projectiles they also have um are they very difficult to land at ranges since at ranges um they have travel time by the time you they get there they've already moved out of the way whether on purpose or an accident um therefore ranges typically not the best place to be trying to land your nades from so on a contrary to maybe popular belief isn't a long ranged character you don't want to play her like a sniper from all the way back here um because of the fact that it's going to be difficult for you to land abilities you're also from it if you're too far away from your teammates you're also not going to be able to land your your nano at, that actually has a range on it too um so if you notice here i can't actually na nano i think it's like 40 meters or something like that there we there we go right um on so and then on top of that um you're also going to struggle with other things like smaller targets harder to hit things like that you it's going to be easier for people your teammates to just get out of your line of sight if you're not um if you're super far back so instead you're going to want to be um closer to your team probably a close range to a medium range so close preferred medium sometimes enemy team you're going to want to be like medium to close so medium preferred close sometimes makes sense yeah, and that, that was a conversation I've also had before about effective mm -hmm. ranges. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, most would consider Anna having a pretty far mm -hmm. effective range. Um, but you're suggesting maybe a, approach a, a little bit closer. Mm -hmm. A little bit closer to a mid-range in comparison to your enemies. Um, yeah. Teammates, just think about teammates. Um, there's actually like very little value to being further away. Enemies, like yes, because you don't want to get shot at. But teammates, there's there's not a major reason why you'd want to be far away from your teammates most of the time. A lot of time, that just kind of isolates you from them. Now, there are some points on maps where being further away can be beneficial, um, like different with wide open sight lines. Um, but then even even some of those cases being a little bit closer can be handy while also not you know that much more dangerous as long as you're using cover like you know why would i be all the way back there when i can be right here have better angles on my teammates have better angles on the enemy team and still have cover for defense mm -hmm. that kind of makes sense yeah would you say and this is a hypothetical question here um so bear with me mm -hmm. but there will be points where because you we made the distinction between um, staying outside of the effective range of our enemies, but with our teammates, it doesn't really matter. Um, there will be points where those lines, those Venn diagrams, if you will, become a circle and the effective range of my enemy is also, you know, closer. It's basically when my team goes dive, you know, like when they, yeah. they go dive. Mm -hmm. Me being close to my sure. teammates means me being close to my enemies. Oh, okay, for sure, for sure. Yeah, so that does the team composition, like you said, does dictate play style. So you do change how you're playing according to team compositions. So if they're on dive and you as Ana are incapable of going from point A to point B incredibly fast like they can, then in those in those cases it actually is probably gonna be more beneficial for you to be at a range, but still, even then, I'd say mid range is still better than long range in a lot of those cases. But you know, it just kind of depends on on the angles that you're able to take. You know, I'm not saying the long range is terrible in all cases. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that it's not. If you have the option, sometimes mid range is going to be better for especially landing abilities. Right. Or maybe I just switch in that situation. Um, like in switch to like I guess like what, if, what are you talking? Like if my team goes dive, where. 
Oh, Anna's very good with dive. Okay. Yeah. Anna's a, Anna's a one of the better picks with a, with a dive competition because you do have the capability to shoot long range, um, and because you're old, you know a lot of times combos with with a lot of those characters. Oh, mm. yeah. I guess I never thought about it. That's that's a good point. Yep. Whereas a lot of other supports, like think for example, like Baptiste, very difficult to heal divers. Uh, Moira, very difficult to heal divers. Um, so let's see what are our other ones. Lucio, very difficult to heal divers in a lot of cases. Um, who else is there? Uh, Zen, you know, Zen, Zen's all right. You know, with them. Oz uh, is just one of the more solid picks. All right. So let's start to wrap up here. Five minutes left. Um, so when it comes to abilities, um, put focus, effort, Nade, look to land it in the middle between as many people as possible. Scope Nade tech, don't want to try to hit people directly. Um, think about all the obstacles and look to avoid those using better positioning such as off angles and be, being closer to land your abilities. This is how you're going to be able to get your carry value. So put a lot of effort into being able to land your abilities and you'll start to see a lot more value. But of course, don't sacrifice, like don't like feed to get an ability in, right? Yeah. That sort of thing. You're doing a good job of not dying, but um, you know, if you you could be the most survivable person in the game by staying in spawn all the time and then never once do anything and, you know, no, not go anywhere, right? right? <laughs> so, the overall ability is probably like a medium high priority for you to work on. Um, next thing, ult usage, we just talked about priority. Um, that was probably like the main thing, it's just priority. Maybe a little bit of timing, make sure that Reinhardt's like close enough to them to actually be able to swing and things like that. Yeah. Um, Definitely then we're okay. getting and then old timing uh, yeah if, mm -hmm. if there's anything i i think i'm hearing is my cooldown usage and my alt usage basically all abilities outside of my primary fire is you know done willy-nilly sometimes yeah mm -hmm, exactly yep and those are going to be your big ticket items in a lot of cases um whereas you know your basic like heal 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 unless you're like just letting people die all the time um th that's going to be your kind of default stuff that's your standard yeah. like every everybody does that approximately the same unless you're bad at it or really good at it <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> you know right. um all right so n overall that one like medium priority for you to work on next um, mechanics, mechanics, um, may, not not to toss that out the window. There's still important stuff there. I'd say, especially the sleep usage mechanics. But um, prep, warm up and get more consistent with that. With those warm ups that we just talked about. Um, overall, that's like a low to medium, just mechanics specifically. Though, not to say that's not something that can come up in the future. Yeah. Um, then besides that, positioning, positioning, position maybe a little, a tad bit closer. Not. Uh, it, not terrible to be a long ranges, but you know, just gonna be a little bit more efficient sometimes to be a bit closer. Mid range usually is where you prefer to be in a lot of cases. Yeah. Um, then you know, and then teammates, it's close to mid. Enemies mid to close. Long ranges occasionally, depending on the on the map and the setting and the comp, right? Yeah. Um, then uh, besides that, just you know, you try to check off as many boxes as possible. Make sure you have cover. Make sure you have high ground. Don't drop from high ground if you don't need to. Um, big one here. Sometimes this kind of cropped up a couple times. Make sure to keep line of sight on your teammates, right? And yeah. not thinking not just about where are they now, but where will they be? Um, all, all that stuff like that. So that probably came to a medium too. And then the last thing was awareness. Awareness things like press tab right in between every single fight. Yeah. Where's your teammates at? Sometimes maybe we'd lose track of the tank. Where's the enemy team at? Maybe somebody would flank us once in a while. And we'd be slow to react. Things yeah. like that. Overall, that one, yeah, maybe like lower end of the medium. So to put that all in order, number one was abilities. Number two was positioning. Three, ult usage. Four, um, going to be your awareness, and then five mechanics. I'm, I'm betting we'll we'll talk again because a lot of this is right. really really good advice, um, especially you know the ability cooldowns. Like you said, it's really hard to learn. Um, multiple things at once. We kind of have to think mm, yep. abilities, 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 sleep, 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 nade, nade, nade. Uh, and that's something that, you know, mm -hmm. if anything else, that's something I really want to take away from this one. For sure. Yep, exactly. You know, no don't. 
hone in on that. So. Yep. Exactly. You know, no, don't try to come away from this and do all 20 things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm going to go over to Fiverr, mark the order as uh, delivered. You can go mark it as complete and then leave a review. Um, you know, feel, if you like the session, feel free to get some more. There's always um, there lots of discount options with subscription on Fiverr, but then even um, if you don't want to worry about a subscription on Metify, um, which I can link you to, they have a lot of discount options. Yeah. Um, and then if you ever have any other questions, feel free to reach out anytime. Be happy to get back to you over those. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. Once again, you know, I really appreciate it. Uh, T Boogie, um, thank you so much for coming on and, and sharing your knowledge with the greater Overwatch community and me specifically. I learned a lot. So I really appreciate it. My pleasure. It. All right. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. I'll talk to you later. Uh, have a great day and goodbye, viewers. <laughs> All righty. All right. Bye.